the better. Be sure to watch previous shows on our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you can be notified when we post new content. We really want to connect and hear from you. So please don't hesitate to message us. And to find us online, please go to Tech This Out America on Facebook. Tech This Out on YouTube, Twitter, and all social media platforms. Get whole scope at techthisoutnews.com. We connect the streets. (laughs) So, I mean, I've seen some of the OGs like Snoop Dogg, Nipsey Hussle. They've been very active in the tech space. Uh, just wondering what your thoughts are uh, and what they are doing for the tech community, or have you been able to really notice any impact? Yeah, you know, I will tell you, when I first started, I, I've been very intentional. Prior to doing this job, I actually used to teach at Johnny Cochran Middle School at one point in my life. Mm. Um, our economic development agency, our mission is to advance opportunity and prosperity for all Angelinos. I take that all part very seriously. So. I'm so happy to see that people like Nipsey and Snoop and, and others are really getting actively involved in their communities to try to bring more pathways to tech and media. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's not unknown that um, black and brown people are grossly underrepresented in, you know, higher level jobs in Hollywood and it, in tech. You know, when I go to Silicon Beach on the west side of L.A., it's a lot of white guys in, in uh, you know, co-working spaces. So I talk about this a lot. In fact, the kickoff event tomorrow for all of Innovate LA is focused exclusively on diversity and inclusion, and it's in the Water Garden in Santa Monica, which is where Amazon, Oracle, HBO, Lionsgate, and Cornerstone On Demand, which is a big LA tech company, company are domiciled. And we have 50 kids from Banning High School coming, and we're pairing them up with corporate teams from Riot Games and Uber and Hulu, um, because I want to give them an opportunity to see themselves working at a tech campus like this. Um, so yeah, it's really at the heart of what I do. Um, it's what it's really ultimately the thing that motivates me. I want to use tech and innovation as a as a way to lift people up. Um, so I'm excited to see what what those folks are up to. That was beautiful. Now I know Nipsey. He recently opened his own tech incubator, Vector90, um, and I was wondering, have you seen it make an impact in the area known as South Central or formerly known as South Central? Have you seen it? Yeah, it, it's relatively new. I will say the way it's already impactful is just by the fact that it exists and people are talking about it and looking at possibility. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, development that's happening uh, you know, for good or bad, because of the the Rams stadium that's being built in Inglewood, right? So it's really transforming a lot of those neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of positive aspects to it. There's also gentrification, which has downsides. Um, but it's bringing a lot of attention. And, you know, I know folks, uh, in addition to Nipsey, are looking at building tech incubators and things in South L.A. So the fact that he's shown that it's possible and blazed the trail, I think, is super important. Um, I think it'll, it'll take a little time to get some data to see the impact. Um, but I think right out of the gate, if you live in South L.A. and you see, hey, there's this tech incubator, it's going to you know, sort of make you curious. And there's going to be some kids down there who are going to go work there and build companies for sure. Yeah. So, I, you know, needless to say, rap and technology have gone hand in hand uh, over the years since its inception. And probably since the days of at least the two-way pager, you know, we saw a major shift. Well, yeah. do you think we'll see any of that type of synergy eventually with Innovate LA? Listen, I hope so. And, you know, yes, I think um, you, even when you look at sort of all the major ad agencies, digital agencies in Los Angeles, and I interface with them a lot because I work in addition to innovation, I work on all these workforce development issues focused, like I said, specifically on giving black and brown people who are underrepresented in these industries into these jobs and getting them trained. We work with the 19 two-year colleges in the, in the region as well. And what all of these brands always want is what's authentic, right? They want to tap into urban culture, but, and yet, you know, they don't necessarily have a lot of kids working at their company that represent that. So there's a divide, and I think there's a real opportunity to kind of – 
not even, you know, with some intentionality bring diversity, but kind of blend these things two together. And, yeah, this is the one thing I'll tell you. Again, I told you I looked at Johnny Cochran Middle School at one point. You know, people who are poor are crafty. They, they know how to solve problems, right? Like, mm. give these kids some technology and some opportunity, and I think it's going to blow people away, kinds of things that they create. I believe that. What, Chris, what do you hate most about the work that goes into organizing an event of this magnitude, and what do you enjoy the most about it? Yeah, so I talked about it a little bit before. The thing that I enjoy most is, and if you go to the Innovate LA website and you look at the partners page, mm-hmm. I'm always most proud of the diversity of organizations that come together under this umbrella. Like, I look at that, and it's just like, this is the fabric that we need to connect, yeah. and that's what I love. I would say the biggest challenge, and this has been the challenge with everything I've ever led in my life, is getting other people to care about things as much as I do. Um, and that's the thing that can get frustrating sometimes, um, is you know, really empowering and enrolling people in your vision so that they're working towards it and driving towards it as much as I am. Mm. Well, you got some interesting partners. Um, I see. Who was one of the first partners to come on board that really impacted you and, you know, made you feel like you were headed in the right direction? Yeah, I will say, honestly, right out of the gate, the the mayor's office and particularly his, um, he has an innovation team that was sponsored by Mike Bloomberg's foundation. Um, and they're just an awesome group of people and they've been, you know, partners and supporting me and they always create really cool content. So, you know, Eric Garcetti is a transformative figure, and having his backing um, has been really important and, and much appreciated. That's what's up, man. Um, so, the Dodgers lost the series, but do yeah. you think that LeBron can take the Lakers to a championship? You know, I will tell you, I was at a, a Laker game uh, against previously undefeated Denver Nuggets uh, last week. Uh, A buddy of mine scored some really great seats. Um, And this is the thing I feel about LeBron. If anybody can take a ragtag group of kids and turn them (laughs) into a championship team, Mm -hmm. it's him. Because he really makes everybody around him better. Like, I think that's the thing that distinguishes him from somebody like Kobe. Um, If I could get a little controversial. Uh Um, and Kobe was actually there that night um, promoting his book, but he was there. Uh, so it was, pretty, it was pretty insane having Magic Johnson, Kobe, and LeBron all within 10 feet of each other in this arena. Absolutely. Um, the place went a little nuts. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, do I think it's going to happen this year? No. Do I think within the time that he has left here, will he create a championship team? Absolutely. Definitely. Now, let me ask you this. Chris, do you feel like the Bay Area has had a, a, a profound effect on a lot of the athletes and individuals that are there? Do you see that starting to become the trend even in L.A.? Do you think that will eventually? Because LeBron is a very forward-thinking person, I mean, yeah. while we're speaking on I, that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I mentioned before, you know, Baron Davis and Kobe both have their own venture funds. Um, LeBron, obviously, what he's doing with education and, you know, I think as he's getting older and his career starts winding down, the guy's not going to sit around and do nothing, right? If he, he's had a house here for a long time, I really feel like he'll probably stay here. And I wouldn't be surprised if he starts building tech companies. Mm. So since we're on the subject of sports, Chris, uh, is sports uh, a topic covered at Innovate LA? I'm trying to see. I need to look at the calendar and see if we have anything on the calendar this year. We definitely have had sports-related things before. Uh, you know, the Dodgers have their own incubator, so they've mm-hmm. definitely programmed events before. I will tell you that, you know, this thing is always sort of me building the plane while I'm flying it. And a function of where we are in society right now is that, like, events come flooding onto the calendar in the days leading up to the launch, which is tomorrow. Um, we've probably had 20 events come onto the calendar in the last two days. Um, I haven't even had a chance to sort of open each one of them and look at them in detail. Uh, it's something I look forward to doing tomorrow night after our kickoff event is over. Security is obviously a must these days, especially post the Las Vegas shooting and the most recent with the Jewish synagogue shooting. What steps does Innovate LA have in place to promote safety? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, you know, it goes back to mostly we don't produce the content, so I think it really varies 
uh, event by event. Um, you know, I will tell you that Austin Butner, who is the uh, the uh, superintendent of the Los Angeles Unified School District, which I think next to New York is the second largest school district in the nation. He's in the middle of, of going through labor talks with the union, and he's coming to speak at our kickoff event tomorrow, with, and there will be a bunch of plain clothes, clothes cops with him. So that's just one example. Um, you know, obviously, wherever the mayor is, there's security. Um, you know, L.A., if you see anytime there's celebrities, there's always some very large people in their midst that are there to protect them. Evander Holyfield was at the Laker game the other night with a necklace on that was so sparkly, it was like blinding from across, across the arena. Uh, and I noticed, you know, that sitting right behind him was a, a very large, strong man. So I get it, Chris. Have you had any incidents at any previous Innovate LA events? No, knock on wood so far, everything's been... Flawless, and there haven't been any any incidents. And you know, I, d I don't anticipate that there will be. But you know, like you said, and, and drew its you know attention to what happened in Pittsburgh. Obviously, since uh, this administration has been in power, things are a little different in this country right now. Um, so, would I be surprised if something happens eventually? No, but it's you know, fingers crossed and prayers that. That it doesn't. Where do you see Innovate LA by 2025, and how will the event be impacted when LA hosts the Olympics in 2028? Yeah, so I, you know, I don't know if you guys, or if the sort of general public knows, but the real driver behind LA getting the Olympics is a, a guy named Casey Wasserman. Um, he's Lou Wasserman's grandson. Lou Wasserman was an old Hollywood um, mogul um, at I've Universal heard it, yeah. Right, and so Casey. Um, also owns a sports management company, mm. and he really enrolled Eric Garcetti and really was the guy who got the Olympics here. And I, I have had the opportunity to sit down in front of him very early on in this journey and told him what my vision was. And, you know, he was like, hey, this is cool. Just keep me posted. So after this year, I'm going to get John Rasson, Mark Lieber, and everybody else that's doing big things here, and we're going to get in a room with Casey, and I'm going to make my pitch to him again, which is, look, you guys are building a one-time cultural festival. We're building something that happens every year. Why don't we unite forces, and then we can iterate every year. By the time the Olympics roll around, we'll have this hotwired. We'll have all the community organizations humming and working together, because ultimately that's what you want when you host something like the Olympics, right, is you want to get – everybody on the same page. Um, so that's my vision. So I hope by 2025, you know, Innovate LA is working in conjunction with the Olympics. Where can people go if they want to learn more about Innovate LA or get in contact with you via social media? Yeah, so definitely start with the website. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's great and accessible and beautiful, and you can go look very easily and see that there's this whole cross-section of events. Um, the, the platform that we built it on, uh, in spite of the fact it can be a little challenging for us on the back end, is amazing on the front end, and it has a lot of social built into it. Um, and then even, you know, on the homepage, you can go down and see it's already connected to um, our Twitter and um, our Instagram. So we're across all platforms um, at Innovate in L.A., um, but I definitely would go to Innovate.LA and check that out first. With that said, Chris, what final thoughts do you have for everyone out there, and what should they be attentive to? Huh. You know, I think, again, I'll go back to sort of where we are in society right now, where, where things are a little fractured. Mm. Um, one of the things that I love about Innovate LA, and, you know, I said this before, is that it really is something that brings communities together and creates collisions and collaborations. Uh, and I think that that's the antidote to divisiveness. Um, so I just encourage people to keep building and dreaming and collaborating and working together. Certainly have enjoyed and learned a lot. Um, looking forward to seeing L.A. rise in this regard with Innovate L.A. And um, we appreciate you taking the time, man. Look forward to building with you soon. Yeah. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Nice to talk to you. Okay. All right. Take care, Chris. Okay, peace. So say the dark secret. Signing out. Peace. Peace. Peace.